Hello Sagittarius, welcome to my channel, Autumn Moon the Mage. This is a general reading in regards to love for Sagittarius. It is general, so it might not resonate for you. Uh, if you were drawn to the reading, if you were drawn to the video, then perhaps there is a message intended for you here, or perhaps the entire message is intended for you, but if some part of it really doesn't resonate, if it doesn't feel like your truth, you know, your story, because you'll know, you'll feel it then um, don't force it. However, if like, <laughs> if it's the fear talking, it's telling you that it's not your story, then don't listen to fear. Your intuition is quieter. Okay, <laughs> it's less loud. And that was a minor rant, I'm sorry. So we're starting here, Sagittarius, with the Queen of the Moon Oracle, uh, drawing a card for your energy and a card for their energy. So the first card, for you, what comes out is 14. Um, the waxing gibbous five, it says focus. Seems like good energy to be in. Can we please get a card for the person connecting with Sagittarius? Boundaries, card number 12, waxing gibbous three. Boundaries, and we're going to get one more card the energy connecting the two of you currently. What is the connecting energy between Sagittarius and the person they're connecting with? Two cards came out. Uh, waning Crescent 2, card number 25, which says resistance, and 33, Flower Moon, which says blossoming. Resistance and blossoming. Interesting. We're going to get the tarot out to clarify these cards real quick. All right, so we are using the Shadowscapes, I believe is what this deck is called, to clarify. I'm going to start with you. Focus is pretty obvious. I mean, it, it indicates that you're in a state of, well, I mean, you are in a state of focus. You're not letting outside uh, influences affect you. Um, you focus on whatever is important to you, whatever task it is that you're trying to complete or goal that you're shooting for. You're focused. You're very on track. Can you clarify this for us? Card 14, the focus. Six of Cups is what comes up. Six of Cups is, is past connections often is what this represents, okay? Uh, really, that's what it represents. We're feeling like you uh, were connected with someone in a past life, okay? But this is about, well, I never noticed that there's like shadowy figures in the background. Not like ominous, just like, I don't know if you can see. Focus, camera focus. No? No? There we go. See, there's this like little girl serving tea and then um, behind her here and then over here, there's like these like ghostly kind of looking figures. Never noticed that before. Um, but the Six of Cups is about, it's about a past relationship. Maybe you're, and also about positive memories, you know? The good times, thinking about the, the happy moments that you shared with someone, thinking about the um, the really loving times and just the way that you connect, that feeling of friendship, okay? Because really the Six of Cups is a sweet, it's a very sweet energy. It's very, it's a kind of connection where you just feel like you just know the person and they just know you and there's an understanding and there's a bond there that doesn't need explained and it doesn't, it's just there and it's great and it's comfortable and it's so really wonderful to be in. Okay. So, and that's what your focus is on. That's six of cups for them. They get boundaries and boundaries is about, um, um, Wow, 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 did my brain go blank. Boundaries is about knowing 
what's important to you okay you know what this is when you are when you're sick okay when you're not feeling well uh, and I hope I'm describing this properly this is when you're not feeling well okay you drop down to just your basic needs okay like the things that are just the most important that's what you focus your energy on because you don't have you don't have the energy for all that other stuff all those unnecessary things that we bind ourselves to and uh, this card is actually about putting up boundaries against those things that aren't necessary and it's about looking at what is important and what isn't important and um really focusing on those things that are important and putting boundaries up against the things that aren't all right it's uh it is a um that's funny we get the chariot which is very dedicated energy this is cancer energy you might be dealing with the cancer but it's um really focused in the chariot we have we've gotten in okay i'd like to compare this to smart car okay you get into your smart car you type in your destination in the gps you buckle up and you just let it take you and you are going to that location okay there's no um stopping you that's your destination the ride's going to be bumpy possibly it'll be crazy who knows whatever it is it doesn't matter because you're getting there and that's what the cherry energy is about it's about dedication so this person is like putting up boundaries because there's a there's uh that's funny because you're coming across with this focused energy and the cherry is kind of focused energy you know it's at least dedicated energy definitely dedicated to it to a destination okay to a task and the connecting energy we get resistance and blossoming and resistance isn't something that you do okay this card this resistance card is actually talking about feeling the resistance of the world around you you have a task that you're focused on they have a task that they're dedicated to like whatever that is whatever that or maybe it's an outcome whatever it is that you're focused on and they're dedicated to like you feel the world resisting it you feel the world around you like um saying no 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 you know and putting up all of these walls against you but <clears throat> the card is actually calling for you to to push against it you know like don't fold because of that resistance that resistance is there it's teaching you something but you can push through it and with this blossoming it's more encouragement because blossoming means whatever you worked towards it's 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 blossoming it's it's um it's coming to life you know so don't give up and both of these cards here it's like we're 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 almost there you know like we're going to continue down this journey because it's almost happening for us that's what kind of that's the energy connecting you oh wow i didn't clarify that and i just moved on to you know what let's see let's see can we get clarification for resistance and blossoming Sometimes I, yeah, I think like maybe I'm not supposed to clarify. The thing is when I do YouTube readings, I feel like everybody wants me to clarify every single card. And like truly, I don't feel the need to do that. I feel like I understand the message that's coming across. So sometimes I just, uh, but I feel bad doing that. Like, like the viewer's going to be upset that I didn't clarify. So if you're upset, I'm sorry, but I feel like that message is clear okay let's take a look at the person you're connecting with we want to see how do they see sagittarius how do they see sagittarius we get the queen of acorns that's a queen of wands passion and creativity but this is your energy this is fire energy so that's aries leo sagittarius but it's also somebody who is incredibly attractive <laughs> alluring magnetic like passion and creativity you know they like it's a spark it's a um yeah they just see you as 
very attractive and very alluring, very confident kind of energy. We also get the seven of shells, which is the seven of cups, and that's choices and ambitions. I'm going to clarify these cards because I want to, I would like to know, I'd like to see more about it. This deck here is called the Spirit Song Tarot, and the, it has its own definitions for the cards and also its own names. I mean, seven of shells, which is equivalent to the seven of cups, but they describe this as choices and ambition and it, the seven of cups is choices okay but i wouldn't really think of it as ambitions but i guess yeah like things that we're hoping for that makes sense so it's either that they see you as having lots of uh lots of possibilities like lots of choices um or, or you know actually i mean they it may be that they see you as kind of um a daydreamer, you know, kind of a dreamer, someone who, who, uh, yeah, kind of a daydreamer, but I'm going to clarify it because I want to, I'd like to see what comes out with the other deck. So, but we're going to take a look now at their feelings for you. Sagittarius, their feelings for Sagittarius, please. How do they feel? How do they feel about Sagittarius? Okay, the first card that comes out is the Strength card, which is actually Leo energy, so you might be dealing with Leo. Uh, it says Courage and Endurance, so I feel like you give them strength uh, as far as... Also... I was reading this the other day and I thought it was an interesting take on the strength card as far as feelings go. Uh, and they were saying that the person feels tamed, all right, with the strength energy because in the strength card, um, it's normally a woman and she's like tamed a lion, okay? And the lion, uh, she wasn't afraid of it because she knew that she could. She knows, she has the confidence to know that she um, can tame the lion. And it, it was interesting. It's an interesting take on the strength card. Like, almost like they feel, like, almost like they were, um, I'm trying to think of the, the polite way to say all of it, but almost like they were a player, kind of, and now they're not, you know, like they feel like they've been, tamed okay uh but generally I, I just thought i don't know that just came to mind while i was i was reading about it yesterday it was interesting but generally speaking i think of the strength card as giving them courage like um giving them the confidence make it you make them feel confident you make them feel like they can do it like they can succeed like they can make it happen okay it's also really um passionate energy, you know, that's a fire sign there. So we're talking about, uh, that fire and it's a very passionate energy there. We also get the high priestess. It says intuition and sacred knowledge. Uh, as far as feelings go with the high priestess, I, I feel like that's, um, that's a knowing, like just knowing that someone is, just understanding them and understanding their connection and they feel like the two of you have this kind of understanding with each other that that doesn't need to be explained okay doesn't need to be uh like that six of cups kind of what i was describing there you don't need to explain it you don't need to to tear it apart or break it down or whatever you just know it you just know it and they feel that you know it and they feel that they know it, it it's like a a bond that is beyond the physical world kind of okay in the six of acorns this is the six of wands success and triumph which i think goes really uh, well with the strength card here they feel um victorious with you they feel courageous with you strong and confident and triumphant they feel like they can succeed like the two of you will succeed um yeah and that's how they feel about you. Let's take a look at their hopes. Can we 
please show us can you show us what this person hopes for the future for Sagittarius please what other hopes for the future with Sagittarius Three of Swords. Okay, can I get one more? What's their hopes for the future of Sagittarius? Six of Feathers. Transition and Insight. We're going to clarify these. So the Three of Feathers is the Three of Swords. And normally the Three of Swords is heartbreak. <laughs> but as far as a hope, the Three of Swords actually represents like getting through that pain. Like pain, accepting that pain is a, a part of life and wanting to just work past that pain. I don't actually see the three of swords as like a desire to cause pain uh, or the desire to end something. I don't. As far as a hope goes, the three of swords is a hope to, um, to get, to, to heal that kind of energy, to move past it, to move through it into a better part, which uh, lines up with this six of feathers, which is the six, six of swords. And that's about finding peace and finding calm. It says transition and insight on the six of swords. And on the three, it says release and recovery. And that really is what it, it represents as hope, you know, a release of pain and, and healing of it. Okay. So I don't know if there was pain in the connection and that's what they're hoping to um, recover or if this is past hurt, you know, or pain outside of the connection, possibly, you know, because I do see that you guys are experiencing some resistance around you. So that might be in regards to something around you, like I said. Let's take a look at how they see you. The Queen of Wands. Can you please clarify the Queen of Wands? How this person sees Sagittarius. Please clarify the Queen of Acorns, Passion and Creativity. We have the Four of Swords, uh, which is a kind of paused energy, but it's also healing energy and a planning for the future, okay? We're, with the Queen of Wands, passion and creativity, the Four of Swords. So they find you very attractive, like I said. They, But maybe they see you as not moving forward. They kind of see you as uh, in a pause, in a, in a planning sort of state. For the Seven of Cups, I get the Fool and the Four of Pentacles. The Fool is somebody who wants to dive into something. This is Aries energy, by the way. But the Fool is um, wanting to start, you know, wanting to jump in, wanting to uh, yeah, wanting to leap, okay? And tied to the Four of Pentacles, though, the Four of Pentacles is holding on tightly to something. Sorry, I was looking at this. <laughs> it's like a like a um, iguana or something up there. What's that called? Like a chameleon. It looks like a chameleon or an iguana with wings. Which is interesting. Sorry, it distracted me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Four Pentacles is holding on tightly to something. So, um, but the fool. This is ambitious energy. You know, this is very like um, courageous kind of energy. And but but holding on to something and see they see you as the seven of shells the seven of cups, and I was seeing that as kind of like 
Yeah. Like a dreamer, sort of. That And I still kind of see it that way. It's like you want something, okay, but you're holding yourself back from it. And so they see you as wanting that. They see you as um, hoping for it and wanting to die for it, but stopping yourself. And so, yeah, it feels like they see you as a dreamer. Let's take a look at their feelings. Please clarify the strength card for how they feel about Sagittarius. The Four of Cups. Um, and the Four of Cups is, oh, that's funny, it, sometimes it's daydreaming kind of energy because it's someone who's just, and I see that especially with this card uh, because she's like, she's like looking into this water, you know, like swirling it around. It doesn't she look like she's daydreaming? It just looks like she's, um... But in the Four of Cups, we're focused on something. And because we're focused on something, we're missing an opportunity. Like other opportunities are there, but we're thinking about this one something. And we're just like focused on it and dreaming about it and not seeing other, anything else around us. Okay. And tied to strength for how they feel. So courage and endurance. And then we get the Four of Cups. Well, the Four of Cups, Cups is a state of like, things haven't worked out exactly how you hope, you know? And um, you're wishing that they could. You're wishing that they could um, be what you hoped they would be, sort of, okay? I feel like you're, I feel like you are inspiring that hope in them. You know, you're, you're making it feel like it's more of a possibility to them that, that hope that they've been focused on, that something that didn't turn out as glorious as they thought it would be. Like they could still, like there's still a chance to make it that, you know, hmm. let's give it, let's take a look at this high priestess. Three of Wands came flying out of the deck. The Three of Wands represents going to get something, really. In the Three of Wands, we've made a journey, okay? We, we, we made a choice. We started this journey out towards that choice. We've called that choice into us so we can see it coming for us. And we've moved towards it. And we're like right there within reach of it. And we just need to go a little bit further. So it's about that. Uh, that desire to continue, okay, and about um, having invested in it already, okay. With the high priestess, as far as feelings go, like I said, that's an understanding. That's something that we don't need to explain. That's something we just understand. And with the three of wands tied to it, I would say that they feel like you're moving towards each other. And that's just something that they believe and they understand and that they don't really feel needs to be communicated. It's just something that's happening. You're both moving towards each other. Can we take a look at this six of acorns? Six of wands, success and triumph for how they feel. Can you please clarify that for us? Six of Wands, can you please clarify that for us? Knight of Cups, something just occurred to me. 
Well, it says success and triumphs, okay. Because I was thinking that uh, the six of the six of swords is sometimes. I mean, sorry, the six of wands is sometimes putting someone up on a pedestal, like thinking really highly of them. But this is it, this deck describes it as success and triumphs. So it's more that they feel it's something they feel about their own victory in connection to you. You make them feel like they can be successful. You make them feel like they can succeed. And with the Knight of Cups, this is, in this deck, I find it interesting because in most decks, he's carrying a cup and he's offering it. But in this deck, he sees a cup and he's going after it. And it's like, um, that cup is his like, you know, holy grail. That's all the things he wants and he sees it there and he's going for it. Uh, and so with this particular Knight of Cups, it, it feels like a, um, a charging in kind of energy like they see you as being all that they want and um they're riding in to declare that and, and if, i think this person feels like they would be successful in this you know like sharing with you how they feel and how they see you and coming for you they feel like that they would be victorious and they feel like they would succeed let's take a look at their future hopes we get the three of feathers, which, like I said, uh, as a hope, it feels like um, wanting to get through that, you know, like recover from that kind of pain, heal that kind of pain. And so let's take a, let's clarify. Can you clarify the three of feathers? Release and recovery for their hopes for the future with Sagittarius. Five of Pentacles is what comes out. The Five of Pentacles is about isolation, but also in the Five of Pentacles, we um, we aren't alone, okay? And, and it, as like advice, the Five of Pentacles is saying, hey, you have the key to that door, you know? You can go open that door and let yourself in. You have that, that option. You, you're choosing to keep yourself isolated. And for like a future hope, the three of swords and the five of pentacles, I would say that they're hoping to get out of that. Like they, this person doesn't want to end something with you. This isn't like they're hoping to like hurt you and run from you or something. That's not what this means. Five of pentacles. I think that they're, they want to be out of isolation. If the two of you were something and you're like, you're like parted or you're, um, you're in a relationship, but things are rough at the moment, then I would say they want to get through the pain and they want to no longer be isolated. Like they want to come out of self-isolation or, or isolation period. Maybe it isn't self-imposed. Maybe you've pushed them out a bit. Maybe you're keeping them at a distance, like not like completely removing them but keeping them at a distance you know you have a wall up perhaps okay in which case they they want that to go away they want that to end they want to heal the pain and no longer be isolated with the six of feathers that's the six of swords transition and insight is what it says and the six of swords is moving to a place of calm and a place of peace after being in like a really emotional, really uh, tumultuous kind of uh, situation, things just rocky, okay, and moving into a, a place of peace. And to clarify that, we get the Justice card, which is Libra energy. You might be dealing with Libra, but Justice is about fairness and truth and clarity and um, balance, you know, and, and that is what that Six of Feathers is headed towards. They want they want clarity, they want truth, they want fairness in this connection, and that they're trying to move towards that. That's what they hope to move towards in the future. And if that's not in this connection, then that is for this connection. Like they hope that that is something that can be created for the connection, something that you will find uh, if your struggles have been outside of your relationship. But I'm just seeing if anything else wants to come out. Because the cards are being a little bit wonky. We get the Queen of Cups. 
which is water energy. So that's uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. You might be dealing with one of those signs, but that's unconditional love and acceptance and um, um, empathy. Okay. So they want justice. They want, and they want that, that unconditional love. Let's go ahead and get um, a message for you from the crazy, sexy love note. Can I please get a message whoa, whoa, whoa. for Sagittarius in regards to this connection? <laughs> we have three cards. Adventure awaits. Break up your routine and live a little, sweetheart. It's time for some adventure. Plan a vacation. Take a spontaneous drive. A change of pace and scenery will do you good. Plus, you never know whom you'll meet or what you'll experience along the way. A fabulous new friend or partner. A spectacular meal at a charming local joint. The vista of a lifetime. Adventure awaits play. Well, that's funny. Two cards telling you basically to take a break. Self-care includes having fun. Are you playing enough, darling? Do you have enough free time or are you booked to the minute? Life goes so darn fast. Make sure to have a blast along the way. Play connects us to our childlike curiosity and zest. When life feels too serious, toss aside your to-do list and make room for the stuff that turns you on. Go to the movies. Have an adult slumber party. Swing at the playground. You're never too old to wee. <laughs> Let the fun shine in and live a little or a lot. So yeah, I mean, two cards there really telling you to take a break and find joy and find, like, have a good time. Just have a good time. Give each other space. Interesting. Sometimes it's hard to work out our differences when we don't have enough space. So take a step back to create room for authentic conversation. Perhaps you need to consult with a therapist to guide you through the emotional thicket, or maybe you just need some new tools for healthy communication. Whatever it is, don't try to fix it right now. Give each other space. Um, and this actually, uh, combined with these two cards, it really feels like, you know, sometimes we focus on the problem. We focus on the problem. And there you are in that focus. I forgot. That's funny. You're really focused on something right now. But sometimes we focus on a problem. And we, we hold on too tightly to that problem and trying to resolve it. Uh, and once we just let up on it, we just let up on it and take a minute, step back, have some fun together. And then the answer just appears, okay? The solution just comes up because we're no longer, when we're focusing on it, sometimes it's like we can't see it. We can't see the answer. It's right there. It's right there in front of us, but we're so focused on the problem. We, we just, we can't see around it to see that the answer is right there. Does that make sense? And so sometimes we just need to take a, take a breath, take a step back, you know, uh, stop looking at the problem, find, find a way to enjoy, um, this person or find a way to enjoy yourself. Like take a step back and maybe the solution will just pop right out, you know? Anyway, this is what I have for you, Sagittarius. I hope that this reading resonated for you. I hope that it brought you some clarity in this connection. Um, and if it did, I'd love to hear about it. You could like the video. That lets me know that it resonated for you. You could post a comment or my email address is listed below. If you'd like to send me an email and tell me a little bit about what's going on with you and how this reading resonated for you, I'd love to hear about it truly. So if you feel inspired to do that, please welcome, please know that you are welcome to. Um, but yeah, uh, remember to, oh, also thank you. I forgot. Thank you for watching this video. I loved I love reading tarot and um, you watching it really is a form of encouragement and support. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. Please remember to move forward with positive thinking and with positive words, with generosity and gratitude, because we get what we think, we get what we believe. When we are generous, we draw in more ways to be generous. And when we are grateful, we draw in more things to be grateful for. So. 
be positive, draw in those positive things for yourself. And good luck to you in this connection and all things that you are working on. I hope I see you back here again in the future, Sagittarius. Have a great day.